All right, hello everyone. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about positivity and how I believe that your attitude can determine your latitude. How far you can go in life is based on how positive you can be. Um, I grew up, uh, I'm the son of an RCMP officer. So I was born here in Sydney in uh, 1990 and I spent four years growing up here. Uh, my father's from Inganish and my mom's from Lewisburg. So uh, all my family is here in Sydney. So when I was four, we moved to Halifax. So we got a little further from our family and spent some time there. And that's where I began school. And uh, everything was great. I really enjoyed it there. Uh, I still have some friends from grade kindergarten to three that I still even speak to now. Um, after five years in Halifax, uh, dad got a promotion. He said, how do you guys feel about moving to St. Peter's? And we said, St. Peter's. Isn't that the little place we pass on the way back to see Nanny? And he said, well, yeah, well, you know, it's a promotion, and I think it would be good for the family. So we all sat down and talked about it and said, you know, let's do it. Let's go. So we packed everything up, and we moved to St. Peter's. And St. Peter's is small. There's not a lot to do. I actually laugh when people here that I go to school with say, there's nothing to do in Sydney. I said, well, I lived in St. Peter's for two years. So... Come on, guys. So as far as St. Peter's went, we were only there for two years. Uh, I had the privilege to play golf at Dundee. That's where I started golfing. I still golf today. So I thank God that Dad took us to St. Peter's because that started one of my favorite pastimes. Um, so after the two years, uh, Dad came home. He said, we have another opportunity for a promotion. So we said, well, where, where could we possibly go now? He said, how do you guys feel about Winnipeg, Manitoba? And he said, I guess that's good. I don't know. I've never heard, even really heard of Winnipeg. I'm still in grade five. You don't really, you know, you don't know, <laughs> you don't know what's going on. So we got there. We, uh, we packed up pretty quickly, actually. It was the end of August we left St. Peter's. And we started school, I think, on September 2nd or something that year. So we started grade six in Winnipeg. And life was good. It was nice and hot. I'm still, I had no clue at this point that winter would be a shock, but it was great, you know. My family stayed together when it came to these things. We were always there for each other, and as, you know, we're moving away from our big family, the big picture, and we're kind of branching off and going on our own way, but as we moved from place to place, we got closer, whereas I see some of my friends that have lived here their whole lives. They're not as close with their family because they... You know, they've had friends from, you know, birth to now that they've always been with. So that's their family. So I was lucky enough to be tight-knit with my own. So while we were in Winnipeg, we were there for about seven years. I only got to see my grandmother about three times in seven years. She flew out twice, and I came home once. Uh, while we were in Winnipeg, we lost a few family members to cancer and other things. Um, so it was, it, it was hard growing up that way, but because I had my mom, my dad, and my brother, I found a way, and we found a way, to cope with things. We were always there for each other. It didn't really matter what, the, you know, what adversity came our way, we always had each other. So when we came from St. Peter's into Winnipeg, and we kind of all fell into our own thing. My, well, seven years we were able to, you know, I got some friends, and they were my friends for those seven years, and me and my brother kind of drifted apart. Uh, you know, he went his way, I went my own. He's four years older than me, so when he started university, I was still in high school. So he went to the University of Winnipeg, and, you know, he played basketball, so he had his own agenda, and I had mine. So my brother stopped playing basketball after three years, and he was finishing up his undergrad in his fourth year, and uh, he was looking uh, to transfer. He was playing university basketball at the, at, in Winnipeg, and uh, I was just finishing up high school, and I was pursuing a university basketball career as well, and the opportunity to go to CBU came, came around, and my brother had the same opportunity. 
So we sat down and we talked about it. Now at this point, we're not, you know, I'm in high school, he's in university, I'm not cool, and I think he's, you know, doing his own thing. So we don't bother with, the, with each other too much. But uh, this really brought us together. We saw an opportunity, a very positive opportunity for the two of us to get closer and do something together. Our family always did things together until we kind of hit this wall where age was a factor. We didn't, you know, kind of, like I said, we went our own ways. So when we came to CBU, it was great. We were best friends. We had each other. And it could have gone either way, right? We could have, you know, I could have went to British Columbia. He could have went to CBU. We could have, our friendship wouldn't have got as close as it is now. Um, we both had a bit of a difficult experience at CBU when it came to basketball-wise. We weren't, you know, it wasn't the greatest experience. So my brother spent two years before he graduated with his MBA, and he moved to Edmonton. So this was hard on me, but, uh, you know, being by myself now, my parents were gone, my brother was gone, I'm alone. So then, what do I do? Do I, you know, be upset? Do I mope? Do I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, because I was sad he was gone, I missed my parents, but in the time that we had been there, we had made some great friends, and we had met some people. Uh, Right before he left, I met my girlfriend, Deborah, and that was one of the most positive things that's happened to me recently, I guess. And uh, <laughs> so that's good. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, during my life, there's been a lot of adversity, a lot of things have happened, and there's times where you can shut down and just, you know, not take it, not take it the best. You could say, oh, we're moving again, Dad. Like, this is the third time. I just made some new friends, and I got to leave them. So things like that happen in life in general. Sorry, life in general. So I'm just here today to say how important, important it is for your attitude to stay positive. Because if you move into having a negative attitude when things go wrong, you could just roll over, get under your shell, and that could be the end of it. But if you, not to be corny, look in the face of adversity and say, no, I'm going right through you. You can be very successful. And living in a place like Sydney, where our economy is not the greatest, the uh, jobs are at, you know, they're tough to get. So, but that's adversity. So instead of saying, oh, I can't get a job, I gotta get a trade, go out west. That's not, that's not the answer. If you say, I'm gonna make myself a job, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur, I'm going to go to CBU, I'm going to get my education, I'm going to make something of myself, you can do it. It doesn't have to be, you know, these roadblocks don't have to be the end. You can keep going past things. You know, um, I have family members with, uh, with cancer, and they, in my family, positivity is the way to go with everything. When they had cancer, they fought and fought and fought, because that's what you do. But if you have, if you're diagnosed and you say, oh, I guess that's the end of it, then more likely than not, that's how it's going to be. I was uh, diagnosed last summer with uh, thoracic outlet syndrome, which, uh, for instance, there's no doctors in the room, means I blood clot really easily. And it was one of the reasons why I wasn't able to play basketball this upcoming year. So instead of moping and saying, okay, can't play basketball, what am I going to do now? That was my life. I loved basketball. Uh, I ran for uh, vice president of our students' union at the university and won. So now my time is concentrated into uh, making life better for other university students, uh, trying to recruit people to come into our university, and I just, it's great, you know? So taking a negative and turning it into a positive is basically how I see going about any situation. So the thing I leave you with today is that before you go to bed, write something down that was positive that happened to you that day. So when you wake up the next morning and you have your notepad by your bed, you open it up, you read it, you're going to start your day on a positive note before anything could possibly go wrong. Thank you very much.